Welcome back Gothamites. If you're new here, I'm London aka History of the Batman. I'm sure you're asking yourself, London, why are you dressed like this? <laughs> because it's Halloween! And I am Josie from Josie and the Pussycats from the TV series Riverdale. Josie and the Pussycats, it's so awesome. Even before Riverdale. <laughs> I will tell you why I'm dressed specifically like this way, way later in the video. Because you're here for Batman. Since it is the spookiest time of year, I wanted to highlight not just one of my favorite Batman stories of all time, but also one of the scariest interpretations of the character and tell you why it is the perfect representation of the Dark Knight. In that story, my friends, is of course the three-part arc dubbed Vampire Batman, which is under the DC Comics imprint Elseworlds. It is written by Doug Mensch and illustrated by Kelly Jones, Malcolm Jones III, and John Beatty. But before we jump into all of this death and despair, why don't you subscribe to this channel so you can become a part of this wonderful Gothamite community. To start, if you aren't familiar, Elseworlds is an imprint started in DC Comics that tells stories featuring DC characters, such as Batman, that are outside of the regular continuity of comic book canon. There's a lot of alliteration going on. I like it. Prior to the first official Elseworlds story in 1989's Batman Gotham by Gaslight, Batman is always a trailblazer. <laughs> the stories were usually referred to as imaginary tales, which were huge in the 1950s. But one of the most memorable Batman Elseworlds stories began in 1991's Batman and Dracula Red Rain. As Commissioner Gordon has to quietly figure out who is slashing throats left and right in Gotham City alleys, Batman, of course, is tracking down this mysterious killer himself. But during all of this, Batman is weirdly transforming from having an aversion to sunlight, from being able to lift up a car with little to no effort, to even having weird contusions on his back. His doctor just does not get paid enough to check all that out, I'm telling you. I'm surprised Bruce Wayne has a doctor. I mean, Alfred is here. That's a whole, it's fine. <laughs> But being the detective that he is, Batman begins looking into the actual possibility that maybe the culprits of these horrible crimes are actually vampires. He actually finds a lair in the Gotham City sewers that not only houses the undead followers of no one other than Dracula himself, but also a vampire named Tanya, a former follower of Dracula who, after seeing his very, very evil ways, creates a serum that actually cures her bloodlust. But even though Tanya and others aren't directly following Dracula, the only person at this point who can't be swayed by Dracula's persuasion is no one other than the Batman. Are you surprised? You shouldn't be surprised. So Tanya and Batman go to Commissioner Gordon and tell them that Dracula and his followers are the ones committing all of these murders, which Gordon, of course, is hesitant to believe, but it's Batman, so sure, vampires, here we are. But after Gordon's revelation, he's kidnapped by Dracula. It's just a really hard work week for Gordon. So in order to save Gordon and kill Dracula and his minions once and for all, Tanya and Batman devise a plan. Tanya bites Batman to make him go full vampire. They lure all up into Wayne Manor, and then Bruce blows up Wayne Manor. Although Alfred is initially shook because their house is gone. Alfred, it's not about the material things. What am I kidding? Batman's always about the material things, it's about the gadgets, it's about the Batmobile, it's about the Batsuit. Bruce focuses on Tanya's sacrifice, and he knows that he has to take down Dracula himself with his cult completely gone. Or so we think. Watch out for that later. <laughs> so with his literal wings, he flies to find Dracula, rescues Commissioner Gordon, and then goes head to head with the head vampire. Batman defeats Dracula by literally impaling him against a tree, kind of the whole stake through the heart type thing. But in doing so, Batman has so much blood loss that Bruce Wayne actually dies. And Alfred is really, really distraught. 
because it's like losing a son. But if Batman is a vampire, you guessed it, Bruce Wayne may be gone, but Batman will now live on as a vampire forever. Red Rain in 1991 was so popular, it was given a seemingly conclusion titled Batman Bloodstorm, written by Mench and illustrated by Jones and John Beatty. In Bloodstorm, you learn that some vampires are still lingering around the streets of Gotham. So who would take up the cause and replace Dracula as the head of the vampires in Gotham? Why, the Joker, of course. I couldn't think of anyone better. <laughs> So as Joker's never-ending chaos somehow goes supernatural, Batman is dealing with his own immortality and now bloodlust. But the only way he's able to tackle his bloodlust, which in many stories is of course with the help of Selina Kyle, who is rocking it as a werewolf, which I think is kind of cool, after being bitten herself. Speaking of wolves, <laughs> my husky hasn't been feeling well this week, so he's being extremely needy right now. So Selena becomes a balance for vamp bats until that is completely ruined when Joker kills Selena, leading to an event that over the last 78 years people have been wondering when and how it's going to happen and that is Batman draining Joker's blood, killing him. However sweet this was, and personally for Batman I don't think it's sweet. I'm pretty sure he had much anguish to deal with. Batman is now a blood-loving scary machine and he asks Alfred Pennyworth and Commissioner Gordon to put him out of his misery and to protect the people of Gotham by literally driving a stake through his heart and killing him once and for all. So Vampire Batman is dead. But of course, like with many comics, this does not last for long, Children of the Night. Because the actual conclusion of this riveting tale of blood and sacrifice comes in 1999's Batman Crimson Mist, written by Mench and illustrated by Jones and Beatty. Why Gotham City thought that it could be less terrifying without Batman protecting it is beyond me. Because without Batman, the city has gone completely haywire, especially due to the courtesy of the Dark Knight's rogues gallery. In order to save the city, Alfred and Gordon decide to take the stake out of Batman's heart and bringing him back to life as the undead? I'm not really strong on my vampire zombie lore, so... But he comes back to life. However, Batman has been dead for a kind of long time and now he's more focused on how he has been decaying and he has just turned into this horrible, bloodthirsty beast. So while in hindsight, them taking out the stake was a great theory, I commend you guys. Vamp Bats is now worse than ever and is literally killing two birds with one stone. He's not only trying to clean up the streets of Gotham, but he's actually killing members of the rogues gallery, such as Scarecrow. This death is very gruesome. <laughs> so now it's Alfred... Gordon and the few Arkham inmates that are still alive at this point, like Killer Croc and Two-Face, a whole bunch of rigged explosions in the Batcave, versus an insanely strong, powerful, and lethal vampire Batman. This ends up in a total bloodbath. They think that they've offed Batman, but <laughs> Kel surprise, Killer Croc and Two-Face turn on Commissioner Gordon because they're criminals. Meanwhile, Alfred finds his former surrogate vamp bat person son barely alive, but Alfred decides to make the ultimate sacrifice and tells Batman to kill him so he has the strength from Alfred's blood to go and save Gordon. So this involves not only killing Alfred, but cutting off his head so he doesn't come back as a vampire. But just like a Shakespeare tragedy, everyone basically dies. Alfred dies, Croc and Two-Face dies. When the explosions go off, Gordon is crushed by the rocks. But the explosion causes the Batcave to open up and seep in sunlight. And once Batman is exposed, he begins to deteriorate into dust. Finally feeling the release that he has been vying for, especially since his family from Alfred to Gordon are now gone as well. And as it says throughout this saga, to death and peace. Now that you know the story, why is this 1990s Elseworlds story perhaps the ultimate Batman story? 
Because let's face it, Batman to his core is a terrifying gothic figure created during the fascinating time of the Pulp Fiction magazine. And Dracula and Vampires, especially in Bram Stoker's 1897 gothic novel Dracula, also is created in a terrifying gothic realm. So mixing the two mythologies just makes sense when you want to give a refreshing take on the Batman without striving away from the foundation of what Batman was built on in 1939. This series is all about defending evil to protect Gotham and its citizens, struggles with the moral compass of killing, and most of all, sacrificing your own life to assure that other lives are better. If you look at any Batman story, in one way or another, these factors apply to his history. Batman nightly defends Gotham from the most bad and evil characters from low-life thieves to giant rogues and villains such as the Joker and Two-Face. Batman's modern moral code of no killing is always at play no matter what the situation. Even in this Elseworlds, he was having trouble contemplating whether or not he should kill another human being. Even if they did turn into vampires. <laughs> and it's especially interesting when Batman kills Joker because if you look at this panel, Joker is laughing because even in death, Joker knows that he won. He knows that he got Batman to break his one rule and that was to kill him. And in this Elseworlds, Batman sacrifices not only Bruce Wayne, which let's face it, in a regular Batman story, he can't have a healthy relationship, whether platonic or romantic or just have a normal life. So Bruce Wayne is already dead in a philosophical sense. And through this crusade, Batman is sacrificing his life all the time for better or for worse, but in this story, it's basically for worse. The Elseworlds Batman saga also saw some of the most defining creators within the 1990s all in one book together to form this haunting tale crafted by Doug Mensch and Kelly Jones. And I've said this many, <laughs> many times. But if anyone is going to draw a horrifying Batman stripped from a gothic novel of the 19th century, it's going to be Kelly Jones. But overall, from the themes to the emotional writing to the outstanding and gory yet brilliant illustrations by Jones, Jones III, and Beatty, Batman's Red Rain, Bloodstorm, and Crimson Mist aren't just perfect reads for Halloween, but also amazing reads if you want to try to understand Batman and his entire world in a whole new way, even if that whole new way is super bloody. <laughs> Thanks for watching why Elseworlds Vampire Batman is the ultimate Batman. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a spooky bat, a bat, a bat, thumbs up. If you do want to read all three of these Elseworlds stories, I will link this trade paperback in the description below so you can pick it up and read it. I mean, it is one of my favorites. I literally reread it and reread it and it's just amazing. <laughs> so quickly about my costume. My Josie from Riverdale outfit is courtesy of my friends at Hot Topic. On their Instagram and their website throughout the month of October, they did a 31 Days of Halloween where they had brand ambassadors like myself share their photos in some of their awesome costumes available at Hot Topic. And on day 13, I was featured on their website and they put up this photo and you can see my entire outfit right here. It even came with a cute backpack which I literally carry every day now. <laughs> I know that this video is coming out on Halloween but maybe since you have to work or you have to go to school and you don't have time to party it up on a Wednesday, maybe this weekend you're going to a Halloween party and you don't know what you're going to be yet. I will link not only this outfit or the Halloween store on Hot Topics website, but also where you can just get awesome Batman and DC Comics t-shirts because like you have seen, I'm sure, in many of my other videos, my closet is pretty much 75% Hot Topic Batman t-shirts. So thank you Hot Topic for getting me ready for Halloween. I will be wearing this tonight and I'm not going out. I'm literally going 
to be sitting on my porch and giving out candy to kids and then watching a horror movie marathon. But besides the Elseworlds graphic novel and Hot Topic links, also in the description below is all of my social media, so why don't you give it a follow? In particular, History of the Batman on Instagram. Check out my comic book reviews for Comicosity. And of course, please subscribe to this channel so you can become a part of this Batman community. It would mean so much to me. I hope you all have a fun and very safe Halloween. And we will have more History of the Batman soon right here on YouTube. Remember, Gothamites, it's all about peace, love, and Batman. Happy Halloween! <laughs>